Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, we will continue talking about combinatorics, and today's topic is combinations. Um, uh, I, I do encourage you actually to uh, watch all these lectures on unizor.com website, um, not just on YouTube, um, because there are notes to the lecture which you can follow. Um, and then you can actually get involved in educational process by signing on, taking exams, etc., etc. All right, so, um, combinations. We have already talked about partial permutations. It's one of the previous lectures about combinatorics. Now, partial permutations, let me just remind you, is when you have n different objects, we're talking about different objects only, you have n different objects, you have to pick k out of these n and put them in certain order. Now, um, just as uh, an example, let's just con uh, con consider the following um, five objects. Let's say you have a cube, you have a house, country, book, and pen. And you're interested in picking two objects out of these five. Well, you can always have a combination, let's say, cube and country. You can always choose country and cube. And these are two different partial permutations because there are different uh, there is different order of these two, right? Same thing, you can um, choose, let's say, house and, and country, and you can choose country and house, and these are two different permutations, partial permutations. Now, this is the case of partial permutations, right? Okay, now, we do remember actually the formula for this, the partial permutations of you have a total of n objects and you're picking k, it's equal to n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. And obviously you can refresh it by going into the previous lecture where I'm explaining this formula. Now, what's the difference between partial permutation and combination? One very important and very really small difference. We don't care about the order in combinations. So these two actually represent the same combination. And any other pair of um, these two objects, if we don't care about um, their order, it represents a combination. Basically, the combination is a subset. That's what it is. So, let's just count how many combinations we have out of these uh, five objects by two. That's actually explicitly we will calculate we, we will count them all. Well, on the first place we can have cube, and on the second place we can choose house. Then with the cube we can have a country. Or we can have a cube with a book. We can have a cube with a pen. Now, with a house, we don't count house and the cube because we already counted cube and house and we're talking that we don't care about order. So this combination of house and cube is already, uh, is already uh, covered. So we have to go forward. So it's house and country house and book, house and pen, and then with the country, again we already counted the previous one, country and cube, country and house, so we have to count country and book, and country and pen 
and the only combination left is book and pen. Okay, no other combinations. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten combinations of two objects out of five given. All right? So, this is an example of what I mean combination. Combination is basically a subset. And the house pen subset is no different than penthouse subset. That's why we counted it only once. All right. Now, let's just think about how we can calculate how many different combinations um, exist. Well, let's just forget for a second this particular example. Just remember we have 10, because in the future we will have to check this against the formula. So let's go back to our formula for permutations, partial permutations. So this gives us the number of partial permutations where we do care about the order. But let's just think about if you have certain subset of a set and then you change the order within this subset only. It will be different partial permutation, obviously, right? But from the combination standpoint, when we don't care actually about the order, it will be the same combination. So let's say book, country, and pen, and book, pen, and country etc. All other permutations, they constitute exactly the same combination. Different partial permutations, but the same combination. Now, how many of these different partial permutations are supposed to be composed into one combination? Well, the number is as many permutations within this subset we have, right? So if this is a subset of the three elements, we will have three factorial different permutations which we have to count actually as one, which means that the total number of partial permutations would be reduced by the factorial of this uh, set, which is k factorial. Remember, k is the number of elements in a partial permutation, right? So if we will divide it by k factorial, we will reduce the number of partial permutations to the number of combinations, because k factorial of partial permutations always constitute one particular combination. K factorial of these different partial permutations, so all the different ordering of whatever the subset we chose, which contains K element, it's still the same combination. So, if I would like to go into the combination, What I have to do is I have to take the number of partial permutations and divide it by k factorial. So if we have a set of all the different partial combinations, we group this set and each group contains only the different permutations within the subset. It constitutes one combination. Then another group would be um, the group which contains different uh, elements in the subset but positioned in many different orders and we are interested in all these um, uh, permutations which are differ only only by the order within this subset and again it's again k factorial so if you have all the permutations partial permutations of let's say two objects out of five then we group them together. These are all permutations which have the same subset but in different orders. And this is exactly the per all the permutations of the same subset in different order. So it's different subsets, uh, but within this group we always have k factorial different um, uh, permutations. Which means we have to divide by k factorial the number of total uh, of partial permutations to get the number of subsets, get the number of combinations. That, so that's the formula basically. Derived, well, reasonably logically. 
Um, I'm not saying this is a proof. If you, again, if you want to have a proof, you probably have to do it by induction. I don't think it makes any sense because we did it once for permutations and all others are more or less equivalent. But you have to feel that this is the right formula. And let me uh, explicitly put it in this notation. So it's n factorial divided by k factorial and n minus k factorial. So that's the formula <coughs> for a number of combinations. Okay, now, before going any further, um, I don't know about you, but personally I was just thinking, well, we actually heavily rely on the formula for partial permutations, which is not a simple formula. I would say that formula for regular permutations the permutations of n objects, n factorial. It's simple, and the logic for this is really very, very straightforward. You have n different variations, n different choices for number 1, and uh, n minus 1 choices for number 2, etc., down to the one last object. So that gives you n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, etc., which is n factorial. So. Um, this is a simple formula. Formula for uh, partial permutations is slightly more complex and it involves uh, a little bit more logic uh, to derive it. So maybe our reliance on this formula is a little bit artificial. Now, for those who feel that there is a some you know artificial feelings about using this particular formula let me try to derive the same formula differently uh, more logically I would say and I will not rely on this formula more complex one I will rely on uh, this formula the permutations um, of the original set now and here is another logical explanation of why this formula is correct Let's imagine that we have to choose a subset using the following uh, logic. Let's say these are our objects. We put these objects into certain order. Order is important now. Now, let's say we have one, two, three, four, five, six objects, and we want a subset of two objects. So we want, not, we want to know number of combinations of two out of six. So what I do is, I put them in order and separate into pieces. Two on the left and, well, in this case, uh, four on the right. So if I have n objects, I have k here and n minus k here. k is number of elements, number of objects in our subset. The number of objects in the combination we are interested. So, the way how I choose my particular subset is the following. I put all my objects in a row, basically order them, and then cut the k from the beginning. Whatever is on the left, I choose as a subset. Whatever remains, I don't care. So that's how I choose the subset. Then I can change the order of these um, objects, and again, cut it after the number k, and whatever is on the left is my subset. Now, what's right and what's wrong about this approach? Well, right is that every time we get some subset. What's wrong about this is that sometimes we can get exactly the same subset because if I will um, call this object an A and this object a B, and then whatever the rest is, and then another b a and then whatever whatever is left represents exactly the same combination so how many times i counted the same combination of a and b if i'm using the process i was just explaining well it's very easy to count basically all these permutations within the left part do not produce an Dif different uh, combination, different uh, different subset. They produce exactly the same. What's more, if I'm 
changing the places only within the right part, within the tail of this, uh, uh, of this sequence, I also don't really change whatever is on the left. So, out of all the permutations which I have, and I have n factorial, obviously, of all permutations of the original set, I have to, again, divide it by how many different uh, ordered uh, sequences produce exactly the same uh, subset on the left. Well, obviously, again, I have to divide by all the permutations of the left part and all the permutations of the right part, because any of these permutations don't really change the composition of my, uh, of my subset, which is on the left. Now, on the left I have k factorial, on the right I have n minus k factorial, different permutations, so I have to divide my n factorial, which is the total number of permutations, by all the permutations of the left and all the permutations of the, on the right, because for each of these you have as many of those, and none of them actually changes the composition, right? So that's the formula, basically. We just der er, er, we derived this formula using some slightly different logical explanation in which we do not really rely on the formula for partial permutations, but just the permutation. So permutations of the total, I divide it by permutations of the left part and the, and, and the right part. And that what gives me the correct number of subsets which are on the left. What's interesting, by the way, is that the number of subsets which I choose in this way, which is on the left, is exactly the same as the number of subsets which uh, I'm choosing uh, on the right. Because choosing a subset on the left automatically chooses the subset on the right. Now, on the left, number of combinations is this. Now, how many combinations of, in this case, uh, of four elements out of six, or n minus k elements out of n? Well, that's obviously n, n minus k. So what I'm saying is that choosing k um, uh, subsets, subsets of, of the size k, the number of these um, subsets of the size k, number of combinations of k from n, is exactly the same as number of combinations of n minus k by n. Because choosing a subset of k, we automatically choose a, sub, uh, a subset of the rest of the object, which is n minus k, right? And if you will substitute, instead of k, n minus k into this formula, you will get exactly the same thing, right? If n uh, minus, it would be what? If you will choose this, Instead of k, you will have n minus k, and in, ca and in case of n minus k, you will have n minus n minus k, so it's plus k, which is k factorial, again, so it's the same formula, right? So it's very interesting, actually, so the combination is kind of symmetrical, choosing a combination of k automatically chooses the combination of n minus k, all right. Now. Um, notation. You see, I was just using the most primitive notation, which is this. There are many different notations for the number of uh, uh, combinations, and uh, they are this, this. Nobody knows what's exactly the right thing, because different people do it differently. You have this, or this. So, whatever it is. Now, what is um, the most important uh, sign by which you can basically distinguish which of them is the number of total number of objects and which one is the subset? Well, obviously, the subset is smaller, or at least not bigger, right? So, I I if you have one of the numbers smaller than another, so that means that the, the bigger number represents the total number of objects and the smaller number represents uh, the number of objects in, in the subset. All right? Okay, so that's as far as um, the symbolics are concerned. Now let's consider a few trivial cases. 
And uh, you know what? After you have derived certain formula, like in this case we have this formula, it's very important to make sure that the formula makes sense. So the question is, does our formula make sense? Well, let's just check it in a few uh, simple cases. Case number one, k is equal to n. Now, what does it mean? So I'm choosing a subset of n objects out of n different objects. How many times I can do it? Well, obviously, there is only one way. There is only one subset, which is a full set. And supposed to, now this formula is supposed to give me one. Well, let's just check. I have n factorial divided by n factorial divided by n minus n factorial. Well, n minus n is zero, and you remember from the previous lecture, I was talking about zero factorial, that it's equal to one by definition. So we get n factorial divided by n factorial, which is one, which is exactly how our intuition basically tells us supposed to be. Another variant. What if k is equal to 1? So I'm picking only one object out of n. How many different combinations of one objects out of n exist? Obviously n. Well, let's just check the formula. We have n factorial divided by 1 factorial and n minus 1 factorial. Now, what is this? Well, 1 factorial is 1. Now, n minus 1 factorial is the product of all, member, all, all numbers from 1 to n minus 1. This, however, is the product of all numbers from 1 to n. So first it goes from 1 to n minus 1, and it will uh, cancel these guys, and the only one which is remaining is this. So these are all cancelled out, and only n remains. So, for k is equal to 1, our intuition tells it should be n, and the formula gives exactly this. Now, the third case, k is equal to 0. What does it mean? Well, it means we want an empty subset. Remember what empty subset is. Subset which, which has no elements. How many ep empty subsets exist? Oh, well, only one. There is only one empty subset in the universe. There are no more empty subsets. So we always can have um, that it's the, the answer is supposed to be equal to, 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 to 1, one empty subset. Well, let's just check. It's n factorial divided by 0 factorial and n factorial. So again, zero, fa 0 factorial is 1, so the result is 1, as it's supposed to be. And um, the last example which I would like to make is I would like to recall um, my initial example of five objects, uh, cube, house, country, book, and pen, and I was choosing two, and I basically listed all the different combinations of two objects out of these five, and I counted ten different combinations. Now, let's check it out. Uh, five objects, two in a group, So it's 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial and 5 minus 2, 3 factorial, which is equal to... Now, what is 5 factorial? It's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. It's uh, 2, 6, 24, 120 divided by 2 factorial, which is 1 times 2, which is 2. 3 factorial, 1, 2, and 3, which is 6. 120 divided by 12, which is 10. Exactly what we have to do. Well, again, this is not a proof, obviously, of the correctness of the formula. It's just to make sure that whatever you do makes sense. Well, that's it for today. This is just an introduction into what actually the combinations are. Um, don't forget its formula, its properties. Well, speaking about don't forget the formula, disregard what I just said. You can forget the formula. As long as you remember the logic when I was just talking about you have certain number of objects put into certain order, you separate k from n minus k, and you're saying that basically the total number of permutations, which is n factorial, which you actually probably remember anyway, right? 
should be divided by k factorial and n minus k factorial to get to the number of combinations. Because all these permutations within this group or within that group really produce exactly the same subset. So that's how you don't have to really remember the formula. You just have to think about logically uh, deriving this formula from this particular process. Put it in a row, cut it, whatever the first k is, and then just cut, uh, uh, cut count the permutations. Left part, right part, and the total. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, I do encourage you to use the unisor.com as an educational site where you can establish the whole educational process with a supervisor or a parent who can, can, who can enroll you and you can go through exams and all that, 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 that stuff. Alright, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.